What's going on everybody? Nate here and today I wanted to start a tutorial series on building and kind of go through my thought process for building, how I plan things out, some of the different builds that I have done that you guys have seen, and just kind of create new things and give you guys ideas to make things your own and do your own style of building. So in this video we will start with some of the basic stuff that kind of sets the base for how you want to build so that your things can be themed, so you you know pick an area that you want, how to decide to use a texture pack or you know what kind of setting you want to go for in your city or just your build in general. Some people want to build cities, other people want to build just a giant tower or a castle, maybe you want to build an underground base. So in this series I'm going to try to go over a lot of different ways to build things as well as how I would go about doing them and some tips and ideas towards making them your own. So in this episode we're going to start with deciding whether or not to use a texture pack and I personally really enjoyed the classic look of Minecraft. However, there are some things that I do like change, so I use a texture pack called A Little Taste of Germ. The link to that will be in the description. That texture pack stays true to Minecraft and kind of how it looks, but it changes some of the blocks to be better for decorating and building in general. So it changes things like the andesite, diorite, and granite. It makes those a little bit better for building. It makes them have the stone brick texture. It updates some of the grass textures and gravel and things like that to be better for paths. And overall just does a few quality of life things here and there. Um, makes the wood kind of blend together better. So definitely check that out if you really enjoy building and want to keep true to the Minecraft textures. However, there are also other texture packs that other people like to use, and feel free to use a texture pack. Just make sure that you choose your texture pack before you start building, because you don't want to build something, change texture pack, and find out that it doesn't look good, or it doesn't match the way that you want it to, because some texture packs do change colors and the way things look, so just be careful of that when choosing a texture pack to make sure it's the first thing that you do. The next thing to do is to choose a location. Choose where you want to build, and kind of figure out why you are building there. So I'm on a creative world here, a fresh world, kind of figuring out where I would might want to start a village or a city. Maybe I wanted to do a, a few buildings and connect it to a river or an ocean. Maybe you like building in the mountains and having elytra towers that let you fly over the landscape and see everything. Maybe you like building underground and having an underground base. So maybe you want to find a ravine or a very large cave system to build in. So Whatever you do decide to choose, make sure you choose it before you start building. And I personally do all my building in survival mode, so I need to make sure that I pick my location and have it laid out before because I need to collect all the resources, placing them and breaking them, uses tool durability. So definitely make sure that when you're choosing a place that it's where you want to stay and kind of look around the area to make sure that if you want to expand that you have more space to do so. So on this world, we're just going to look around here and I see right away there's this river which are really nice to build by because having docks having boats things like that are cool to have there's also a lot of water so it most likely connects all the way around here so by bodies of water maybe by this lake over here would be cool building by oceans is always nice because then you can have somewhere to go explore you can build underwater if you would like so Definitely get a lay of the land. Obviously, in survival, you are going to be on the ground. Might be more difficult. Might want to build up with some blocks. But definitely take a look around. You can also copy the seed that you're in. And if you're not sure if you found anywhere you want, you can go into a new world, put in the seed that is of your survivor world, and then go in creative of that world and fly around and kind of look at the land from above to be able to see what is on your seed so then that might help you find somewhere that you would like to build so I personally like to have elevation differences in where I'm building so for example I don't like building on super flat areas so this is mostly flat I could make these hills a little bit more but it's mostly flat not a lot of hills I personally prefer to do something that has hills that has elevation differences just to be able to break up the land and make everything look more connected and closer together because of that so if I were to choose somewhere on this world it might be near these hills here because then I can build something up on top of the hills as well as something down low so take this spot for example it's nice and green down here it has a little lake and also uh, leads into some water over there and it also has this hill behind so I could build something up on top of there. 
So what's important to remember when choosing your landscape is the area around you, the scenery, the color of the grass, and you know where you can expand into things that you can change in your scenery. You, you can always plant trees, you can always pick different trees to be around you, and you can always terraform to add you know, more of a cliff or to make it flatter in some areas. So the main part is to pick an area that is has the grass colors that you want, has possibly some natural water spawning, and is in an area where you are able to expand and continue to grow your area if you would like to do that. So the next thing you want to do is to choose your color palette and what kind of blocks you want to be building with in your area. These blocks can be a combination of different things. The things that I look for and try to use are wood, some sort of stone and then some sort of accent block something that's a little bit different kind of to change up the way things look so i tried to pick one of the woods or two depending on the build um so i really enjoy using the dark oak the oak and the spruce those are my three favorite ones to use for the logs in combination with the planks i think that they complement each other well if we have you know the spruce planks here next to the oak logs or we have the dark oak planks next to the spruce here they they definitely blend together very well for this video i'm using the vanilla minecraft as the not using any texture pack so that will help you guys who don't have texture packs or don't use texture packs to kind of see but in the texture pack I use, these textures are a little bit different and they uh, connect differently than in vanilla. So always keep that in mind that uh, vanilla Minecraft does look different than the texture pack and this won't be universal for all. So for example, the spruce logs here won't look the same possibly in a different texture pack and might not look together with or look good with the oak logs. So always just keep that in mind that if you're going to use a texture pack to do that before you start choosing your color palette. The next part I would do, so if I were, say I chose to use spruce logs, spruce planks, and oak logs, oak planks, very basic. So if I have these, then I wanna choose other things to go with them. So I might use these for the walls, I might use these for floors, I might use these for a roof or a ceiling, but I want to also have some other colors to go with them because these are very brown. So I would want something that helps to break up these colors. So over here I have some other things that you could potentially use. These other things could be the main thing you use or the accent that you use depending on how you want to build. I usually use a lot of wood in what I build just because it's an easy resource to get in survival and I can do a lot with it. So here are some of the options that we have. We have red sandstone and regular sandstone, some of the stone bricks, the granite, diorite, and andesite over there. And as well as over here, we have things like the concrete and the terracotta that are over there, as well as using things like wool are great, the prismarine blocks from the guardian temple, as well as quartz. All can be great accents or main things, depending on how you're building. So you also want to keep in mind how you are going to combine these colors with your landscape. So for example, if you are by water, you might want to, you know, see how your textures look near to water and if that is something that you like, just because you always want to kind of keep a theme and keep it close together in, you know, your color palette. You might use some different accents. So I might use some concrete as an accent in one build or use wool in an accent in another or terracotta in another. But keeping two or three kind of uniform, kind of universal textures and colors for all of your builds will help it keep a theme, kind of keep the idea. So some of the themes that you could do are medieval, which is my favorite. I like doing a medieval style, this wood and stone, kind of a classic kind of look. It works really well with the texture pack as well as vanilla Minecraft. Uh, you can also do things like modern, which is something that does very well with the terracottas, with the concretes, as well as the quartz blocks. Those look very good in a modern kind of theme. You can also do your own theme. You can create your own kind of thing. Whatever looks cool or good to you is what you should build. Just because somebody else says something looks good doesn't mean that it looks good to you. And if it does look good to you, that's what matters the most. So always try to come up with a theme or an idea that 
you like and what looks good to you and if you are you know wanting suggestions or have ideas but aren't sure how they look or if you want help deciding on your theme definitely uh, tune into our stream and we can definitely give you some ideas and help you out with some of those things I'm always open to answering questions and giving ideas for things so feel free to ask me and or ask Megan in our stream the last thing I'm going to talk about in this first tutorial is laying out your area and deciding how you're going to connect all the different parts of your landscape and or your city. So the first thing that I do is to create a path, kind of where I want the city to flow and how the buildings are going to move around in the city. So what I do when I'm in survival is I take cobblestone and I will place it around where I would like my path to go and how I would like to incorporate it. So if I think I'm going to want a path to get up here but see it is too steep, I'm just going to put the cobble here so I know that I need to terraform this and change it but I want to be able to get a path up here so I'd build this like such so then when I'm building things and adding to the path or to the, the city as a whole I know where the different things are going to go and where the path will be I might also you know add some branches off here so I know which way it splits so then I could decide where I want more specifically the smaller things in the city to go whether that's a small house whether that's a place to do things like create potions or to have a place to smell things so if I were this path here now I know that something could be in this area between the paths something could come up along here as well as that I need to make a path that leads up there to whatever I am building up there so this is definitely a very easy and convenient way in survival mode to kind of lay out paths before you have the blocks that you might want for your path to know where your city is going to be and how it lays out the other part of laying out your area is using signs I find that it's very useful to you know remember things and to keep track of what you have and what you don't have in your city and to label what is going to be where so if I was going to build a house here I might label this sign house put it down there and so I know this area I'm gonna have a house or if I'm going to have a brewery here for my potions I might put brewery down and that's going to be where I put my potions so the last part of laying out your area is to clear out all the trees in the area so that you're able to fully see the landscape around you and have a better idea of the terrain and where you can build trees can always be replaced and you can plant them to be the size and the shape that you want so it is important to clear out all the trees in the area so that you're able to better understand the land around you and be able to plant trees in better locations and where you want for your city. Trees can be used in a lot of different ways to help your city feel more natural, to break up things that might look like big open spaces, as well as to make it look nicer and have some variety with having potentially you know spruce trees birch trees oak trees and all the different types of trees in your city so the important things to remember from this video are that you want to decide if you're going to use a texture pack and decide that before you start building you want to choose a location that you're going to build in and that you're going to want to continue to grow so that you don't decide halfway into the build that you want to go somewhere else you also want to choose a color palette that you kind of want to stick to choose two or three main blocks and colors and you can use different accents with them to help change up your city a little bit and add some variety you want to choose a setting you want to kind of choose a theme for your city so whether it's medieval or modern or a rustic look or your own creative one that you've just made up and finally lay out your area so that you are able to have more organization in your builds as well as be able to label and pick where things are going to go before you build them in survival this really helps be more organized as well as kind of understand what resources you need to collect and how much of these different resources you will need thank you everybody so much for watching if you want more of these tutorials stick around i'll be posting more of these throughout the week and into the future as well as give me ideas of what you want to see whether it's you want to learn about paths or building houses or barns or different structures like castles so definitely leave a comment with what you would like to see and what you would like me to build as well as what would be important, you think, for a city to learn about building? So thanks, everybody, so much for watching, and we will catch you in the next video.